이번 주는 우리 모두가 예, 성령을 따라 행하라 이 언약을 잡아야 되겠습니다. This week all of us must hold on to the covenant of walking by the spirit. 예, 왜냐하면 The reason for this is because you and I are the people of the Holy Spirit who house the Holy Spirit. The reference is John 14, 16 to 17. And these verses say that the Holy Spirit will dwell inside of us forever. Furthermore, chapter 14, verse 26. says that this Holy Spirit is going to be the one to teach us all things. Not only that, but John 16.13 John 16.13 says that the Holy Spirit will guide us into the truth. Additionally, the Holy Spirit, according to Acts 2 verse 4, says that the Holy Spirit gives us the fullness and the filling of the Holy Spirit. The meaning of having the filling of the Holy Spirit means that the Holy Spirit is becoming our King, our Master, and ruling over us. Let's say to the person who is sitting next to us, we are the people of the Holy Spirit. What do you refer to uh, when we see a container that has trash inside of it? We call it a trash can. Then what about a container that is holding treasure inside? We might call it a treasure box or a treasure chest. Therefore, because you have the Spirit of God inside of you, you are the temple. So, Corinthians According to 1 Corinthians 6, 19, it says that our bodies are the temple of God. Do you think there is a need to be concerned about the maintenance fees for the temple? The Holy Spirit is the master of the temple. So he's the one to uh, keep up with its maintenance, so you don't have to worry about that at all. Let's bless the person sitting next to us one more time. You are a precious person. You are precious because you have the precious Lord who is inside of you. Romans 8, verse 1. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says that for anyone who is inside of Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. What is the reason why? Romans 8 chapter 2 it says it is because the Spirit the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free. Let's consider this case of, let's say this one person came from North Korea to South Korea. Does that mean when they're in South Korea, they're under the law of North Korea or South Korea? They no longer receive the ruling of North Korea because they're now under South Korea's law. You are no longer under the law, but now you are under the law of the Holy Spirit. 
So you have been completely set free. Please repeat after me. I have been liberated. Even if you were to go and try to get your fortune from a fortune teller, that fortune teller shouldn't be able to uh, get your fortune um, and be able to say it to you. And even if they were to uh, get your fortune correctly, it doesn't matter because you have already been set free. We held on to this word of God last week, Romans 8.2, we should not follow the thoughts of the flesh, but we need to live our lives following the thoughts that belong to the Holy Spirit. If we follow the thoughts of the Holy Spirit, we will experience peace within ourselves and also have the enjoyment of life. Conversely, if we follow the thoughts of the flesh, that is going to lead to death instead. You'll be living your whole life in suffering and then end up dying that way. Romans 8, 14 to 15 says, that because we house the Holy Spirit, we are housing the spirit as the spirit of sonship. And through that, we have become children of God. And then it says, we are now able to call God Abba, Father. I pray that you believe truly in the fact that God, who is your Abba Father, will protect you and keep you. When I was young, I did not live with my father. Whenever I went to school, my teacher would always tell me to go home and uh, receive a, a stamp. A legal stamp from my parents. All my friends would get their stamps from their dad, but I always got my stamp from my mom. There was a teacher who was not aware of my family situation, and there was one time that she scolded me for not receiving a stamp from my father. I actually felt very sad in my heart when that happened. But it was at that time that I realized God is my Abba Father. God is my protector. Realizing that, I felt so confident knowing that God is my Abba Father, and I still feel so uh, at peace because I know that God is my Abba Father. Romans 8, 26-28, it says that God, our Abba Father, the Holy Spirit, is always interceding for us. He is especially interceding for us in regards to our weaknesses. And he is saying that he is going to carry the burdens of our weaknesses together with us. As you raise your own children, of course, as a parent, you want your child to grow to be strong. Even if there is something difficult that your child is going through, instead of being very quick to help your child, a lot of parents actually leave the child alone to be able to develop strength and resilience. The reason for that is because that child has to be able to stand before God with that situation and overcome that situation with the gospel. Even for our um, believers, 
the Holy Spirit is continuing to pray for us and comfort us as we uh, continue our walk of faith. And furthermore, He is bringing together all things and uniting all things to fulfill the good of God. So there will be times where you feel like there are good things happening and other times maybe things will not be going so well for you. However, for children of God, what you are going through is not equivalent to failure. Everything you are going through is going to come together. God will bring all those things together to fulfill His good. So that's the reason why you don't have to worry about anything but to always walk together with the Holy Spirit. I pray you will enjoy this blessing. For the main points, in order to walk by the Spirit, how can we walk by the Spirit? Our passage today says, in order to walk by the Spirit, there are certain things that we need to discard. Think about this. Let me ask you. Is it better to keep a lot of trash in your house or to quickly throw those away? Throw those away? Perhaps you have a lot of uh, trash in your house that... Um, Maybe you have a lot of things that you don't necessarily need in your house that you keep on buying. There are some people who say that if you have clothes that you haven't worn for three years, perhaps you must just throw those away. Throw those away. If you have shoes that you have not worn for three years, then just throw those away as well. In order to follow the Holy Spirit, the things inside of ourselves that must be discarded need to actually end up being discarded. So what do we have to discard that is within ourselves? The desires of the flesh. The things that you desire in your flesh. The reason for that is because the desires of the flesh are the channel that Satan uses to attack you. Why? Today we see in chapter 5 verse 17, it says, the desires of the flesh are against the spirit. What does this mean? It means that these desires of the flesh disobey the will of the Holy Spirit. And from verse 19 to 21, it says that the desires of the flesh make you do the works of the flesh. The desires of the flesh make it so that you become captured within the thoughts of the flesh. We see 15 different descriptions of the works of the flesh from today's scripture passage. And maybe you might have some of these inside of yourself. Let's take a look at what it says. It says sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality. These three things are talking about sexual corruption. And verse 20, it says idolatry, sorcery. These things are talking about religious corruption. And then 
And then we see the descriptions of strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, and divisions. These things are talking about interpersonal conflicts with people. And verse 21, uh, it says envy. It means you are jealous of others. And then we also see drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. So, this is not just talking about being drunk once, but completely fallen, falling into drunkenness. And then it says, I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. What does that mean? It means that you will not receive salvation. The desires of the flesh make it so that mankind cannot receive salvation and it drags mankind into destruction. But these 15 things that we see today, these 15 things have especially been rooted down so very deeply within the culture of college students and young adults. We see that the secular culture of the world is entirely going into this direction of these 15 different things. So in this present age, the spirit of the darkness is working in order to bring people into the path of destruction. Then let's take a look at verse 24. It says, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. We are people of the Holy Spirit. So that is why we must, or we have already crucified the passions and desires of the flesh. These passions and desires of the flesh belong to your old self that has already been crucified on the cross. Your old self is already gone. And you have become a new person. Please repeat after me. Behold, the new has come. So you must live with new thoughts and a new kind of lifestyle. We see in verse 26, Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. <clears throat> there are many people who try to boast of uh, false glories, um, becoming conceited over things that are false. We must discard all of these things. And these are the things that make other people envy us and become jealous. So all of our believers today, I hope that you will hold on to this word of God. And all together, let's throw out and discard the spiritual waste, the spiritual trash. This week, I encourage you to go home and clean out your house of any waste you might have. And while you are at it, also discard the spiritual waste and the waste inside of your thoughts. So you can have a, um, a big cleanup. For my family, we have a big cleanup about once a month. We also had this yesterday. And literally in just one month's span of time, there was so much trash that accumulated at our house. And in my family, it's uh, typically seems like it's my wife and daughters who cause a big mess. But I really want to encourage you to have a big cleanup for your spirit as well as your uh, 
physical house as well. And through this, completely just get rid of the channel of Satan that he can use. The second big point of today is that from this point forward, there's something that you need to hold on to. What is it that you must hold on to? You must hold on to what the Holy Spirit desires, otherwise known as the desires of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5.18 says this. It says, If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. What does this mean? It means that you will not receive judgment. That's true. If you are in the Holy Spirit, because you are in the Holy Spirit, you are not a person who is under the law. Therefore, every single day, at all times, you must hold fast onto the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Then what do you need to do in order to be led by the Holy Spirit? In Revelations 2, 7, it says this. It says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So, if you don't have an ear, maybe uh, you're not able to hear this, but he who has an ear, you must listen to the word that the Spirit gives to the church. What does it say in Revelations 2, 11? It says the same exact thing. As well as chapter 2, verse 17. It says the same exact thing. It says the same exact thing in chapter 2, verse 29 as well. It even says in the next chapter, chapter 3, verse 6, He who has an ear, hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And uh, verse 13 of chapter 3, verse 22, also says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. There is a mention of this exact phrase seven times. The fact that God had this part written seven times means that there was a very big emphasis on this. So please say to the person next to you, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying as his word. So, we must listen to the word of the Holy Spirit, but how can we listen to the word of the Holy Spirit? You must listen carefully to the Sunday pulpit message. And every day, are you continuing to enjoy the blessing of doing your prayer journal? And you must hold on to the, uh, the message flow that comes out during the whole week, the entire picture of the message. So I actually began coming to church on Saturdays for us to listen to the um, headquarters messages all together. But there was no one coming out to church except for myself. So I started sending links to all of you in the church group chat. I'm not sure if anyone actually listens. But if you listen to the word of God, you will realize that there is a flow or a stream to the Word of God. If you listen to the Word of God, you'll see that there is this continuous stream of the Word of God. For our church, after we had the Mark's Upper Room prayer concentration uh, last month, what do you think is the flow or the stream of the word that God is giving to our church ever since then? Have you been able to recognize that? After the Holy Spirit 
came upon the disciples, uh, there was the word that was continuously given to us. Um, subsequently, I pray that you will have the enjoyment of walking together with the Holy Spirit. How is it that we can receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Acts 1, 12-15 says this. The 120 individuals who gathered at Mark's upper room were doing really well in following the stream that flowed inside of their church. They truly held on to the announcements that Jesus provided to them. Jesus provided them these directions to not leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise that God the Father had promised. They held on to that promise, and Acts 2, 1, we see that the disciples, these disciples gather together in one place. And Acts 2, 42, it says this, that the disciples followed the teachings of the apostles and gathered together every single week. It doesn't end there. Chapter 2, verse 46 to 47, says that they gathered together every single day. So what does this mean? It means that the disciples were within the stream of the church. Currently, for our church, uh, we are in the midst of a time schedule of doing a church-wide pastor visitation for each and every family. But there are some people who have not even registered and are not even interested and same thing for our church-wide retreat that is coming up so uh, if that is the case then perhaps that person is struggling to um, grab hold of the flow or the stream of the church so for june and july i really encourage every single one of our church families and members to register for the pastor visitation and for us to gather together accordingly and through that visitation and meeting, let's together break down all the force of darkness that are within our families. I actually haven't been to many of your homes yet. And maybe if uh, you don't feel that comfortable with me coming into your house, then we could even meet outside at a cafe that's close to your house. And if that feels too challenging, then meeting together virtually is also fine as well. Furthermore, for the upcoming retreat, uh, we are calling it the church-wide retreat, which entails that everyone should be a part, but we've never really had every single one of our church members be a part for the retreat. So I really want to encourage everyone to align your schedules and we will have three days of the retreat. I pray that everyone can participate and receive the important guidance during the retreat. Furthermore, we have the World Remnant Conference coming up, otherwise known as WRC. Um, please uh, do your best to align your schedule with that as well. You have to be able to really stay within and follow the stream of the church in order to receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I really want to encourage you to no longer hold on to the desires of the flesh, the desires of sin, but to discard all those things and to follow the desires of the Holy Spirit. There will be people who switch these two things around. They uh, avoid receiving the guidance of the desires of the Holy Spirit and instead they follow the desires of the flesh. They hold on to things that they should be throwing away and discarding and the things that they need to be holding on to, 
they discard those things instead. And if that's the case for you, it's really not going to last for very long. Because the more that you live in that kind of way, the more suffering and pain will persist in your daily life. If you create a channel for Satan, Satan will bring all of his little demons in with him and work to attack you. But you have to follow the Holy Spirit. You have to follow the Holy Spirit for Satan to not even have a small gap or a small channel that he can use to work upon you. Ephesians 4, 27. It says, Do not let the devil have a chance at having a channel in your life. If there is a house that had a robber break in, we shouldn't always be quick to only blame that robber for breaking in because there was not enough security in that house to begin with. For young women nowadays, uh, there have been some things happening in South Korea where now it might not be very safe for young women to go around by themselves when it's dark at night. When there are these channels that open up, uh, there might be, or there have been certain people who have very severe spiritual problems who have been causing very serious things for others at night. But as for you, I pray that you would truly walk with the Spirit, to follow the Spirit. The third point is the things which you must enjoy. You must enjoy the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We see in Galatians 5, 22-23, we see the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. The very first, the very first thing is, uh, the first three fruits relate to God Himself. The love of God. You must enjoy the love of God. No matter what kind of scar there might be in this world, with the love of God, that scar can be healed. For myself, in my family background, I had a very great scar regarding my family. But when the love of God filled me, that is when my scars came to an end. This is referring to the love of the cross. It is the love of God who willingly gave up every single thing for me. It is God's unconditional love that He has towards me. The second point, it is the joy that comes from within, the blessing of being in God. This is referring to spiritual joy. When I was a student, I had a two-hour commute to go to church. It was a very long way, and physically I was very tired. But I would go to church and give worship and travel two hours to commute back to my dorm. But it was during those times of commuting that I was so full, so filled with spiritual joy. So even though the commute was so long, I ended up going to church every single Sunday. And even the commute to go to the college evangelism school, uh, that commute literally took me an hour and a half to get to um, the college evangelism school gathering, but I would literally skip meals so that I could go to those gatherings and meetings. And at the time, there were not roads that accommodated for the size of large public transportation buses in Korea, so there was such immense traffic when I was trying to go to the evangelism school. But I would go there all that long way and receive so much spiritual grace and spiritual joy when I was there. 
Every single Saturday, there was the core conference. I would go to the core conference and gain so much strength. Let's ask ourselves, how much of this spiritual joy am I enjoying? When we had the Mark Supper Room prayer meeting, there were people who, out of our church members, they lived the farthest away from the church, but they would be coming every single day for the prayer meeting. And that is because they had been experiencing and enjoying this spiritual joy. And we also see peace, the genuine, the true peace that comes directly from God. You have to be able to experience these things. For unbelievers who do not know God, who do not have God, do you not know how much anxiety they live their lives with? Because they're so anxious, because they're so unstable, they have no choice but to obsess over money. Because they're anxious, they obsess over people. As for yourselves, I pray that you would enjoy genuine peace. Jesus said, peace I give to you. The peace that I give you is not like that which the world gives. Secondly, uh, these are the three points that you must enjoy in your interpersonal relationships with other people. The first one is patience. It is being able to wait for a long time. Why? It is because you believe in God. Because you believe in God, you can wait for that person for a long time. If you have teenagers and youth who are growing up in your household, you'll notice that they're very sensitive. And I'm sure all of us were also very sensitive when we were teenagers. And uh, we too are most likely guilty of being teenagers who woke up late and then uh, yelled at mom for waking us up late. But because God is going to work upon that child, you need to be able to be patient and be able to wait for them for a long time. And furthermore, the next one is kindness. Kindness is referring to the expression of friendliness. Is it easy or hard to be friendly to somebody who is doing, who is treating you very badly? It's actually very difficult. However, if you are enjoying the love, joy, peace of God, then you will acquire the strength to be able to express kindness to those kinds of people. What's the reason? The reason is because you have to save those people. Furthermore, you can show them goodness. To the people who are mean and rude to you, you conversely will be the ones to show them goodness. It says in the Bible to overcome evil with good. And it says to place fire upon the head of the enemy. Back in the day, when Jewish people did not have uh, matches like we do now, they would uh, make, a, make a bonfire to be able to cook their food. But what happened? What, what do you think would have happened when somebody uh, put out the fire on accident? What they had to do is take uh, some kind of container that can contain fire and go around asking the neighbors to put the fire inside of that container on top of that person's head. 
진짜 원수같이 응? 그렇게 못되게 했던 그 사람이 자기가 그렇게 나쁘게 한그 사람이 오히려 자기한테 숯불을 왕창 얹어주는 거예요. And what I mean is uh, that if somebody who has been so mean and so nasty to you comes to you and asks for the fire, then you'll be the one to put that fire on that head. And think about this. What do you think that person who is being mean to you would be thinking as they're walking back home with a fire? They are going to be actually so very embarrassed. And from that moment on, that person who was mean to you has no choice but to change. Take a look at how the world is right now. The world teaches you to turn your backs on people. And that is how conditional the love of man is. But on the other hand, the love of God, the love of the cross is an unconditional kind of love. Because we receive that love, we have to be able to give that love as well. And that is the love of the evangelist. And in your relationship with yourself, there are three things you must enjoy. The first one is faithfulness. It is talking about being faithful towards God. You must embrace the word of God in yourself and live your life with the heart, the center of your heart that desires to follow the word of God. I ask our young adults sometimes, uh, what was the title? What was the title of this past week's Sunday message? And typically when they respond, they remember the first part of the title, but not the latter half. And sometimes the young, uh, the young adults say, uh, yeah, the title was something about the Holy Spirit. Honestly, all you really have to do is just remember, remember the title and put that in your heart and pray holding on to that. And the next point is gentleness. It is having a warm and gentle and soft heart. For people who have a hardened heart, they themselves will have no choice but to struggle. You have to have a soft heart. No matter what anyone says, you must be able to have the leisure of just accepting that person as is and being able to smile at them. And the last point is self-control. It is being able to control yourself. If you have everything take place, prior to self-control out of these nine points, but you don't have self-control, then everything will fall apart. These nine things are the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the fruits that you bear inside the Holy Spirit. So these are things that you must always be enjoying. But the Bible says this. It's interesting because in the Korean Bible, uh, and also the English, it says the fruit of the the fruit of the spirit. Uh, it doesn't say fruits. It's not plural. It has the singular form of the word, the singular form of the word, which is fruit. And this is because if you truly have love, which is at the very beginning, everything else will take place. I pray that you would enjoy the filling of the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to the conclusion. Then how is it that we can enjoy the filling of the Holy Spirit? I encourage you to enter into the prayer, the prayer that enjoys the filling of the Holy Spirit. Every single day, every time you breathe, you can pray regarding these five things. The first point is this. Triune God, please be with me today. Try praying about that today. Triune God, please give me your guidance. Please give me your strength. Please give me your 
God, please pour upon me the blessings that come from your heavenly throne. And furthermore, please grant me the evidence to be able to save the age. And God, please pour out upon me the five powers. Spiritual power, intellectual power, physical power, financial power, and human resource power. God, please pour out these upon me. God, please give me the strength to be able to save the entire world and even the whole universe. With these five things, every single time you breathe, and within all of the thoughts that you think, pray these things 24 hours a day. If you can enjoy that, then the strength that God gives will continue to come upon you. And as for you, you will have no choice but to walk by the Spirit. So who are we? We are people of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit dwells in you. You have to remember that. So as for you, you are the people who must hold on to what the Holy Spirit has given you. And regarding the desires of the flesh that Satan gives to you, you have to discard all those things. And I truly pray that you would enjoy the fruit of the Holy Spirit to the fullest. 24 hours a day. Enjoy the prayer regarding these five points. Let's walk by the Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much. Our beloved believers, may they receive the filling of the Holy Spirit and walk by the Spirit. May they bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name, I bless and pray. Amen.